Microphone check, mic a microphone checker. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That should always be our intro. Microphone. With that? That's Das Effects, man. They already chill, took chill, that. You can't chill, <laughs> chill. Why you got to blow up in just you can't everything, be, dog? Can't be stealing Das Effects. Oh, was that, it Das Effects? Yeah. That's, that's Das Effects right there. Is that? Yeah, that is Das Effects. Can't chill, be stealing. Chill, we got we to gotta come. Chill, we got to be original, chill, man. Chill, chill, I thought it was right. the four foot fi- um, Pfeiffer. What's his name? <laughs> Yo, how you sat nerd. there and said that, dog? Yo, the tribe? That's how you that's how you <laughs> describe the <laughs> tribe. It's crazy. My man said the four foot fiver. Oh, what up, man. what up? Welcome to the Knowing Part podcast. I got Mike to my left. I got Ange to my right. Yeah. I got Ralph to my far right. Yo, yo. And um What's good, everybody? I'm nobody. <laughs> nah, nah, nah. I'm just the moderator. That's, that's, that, that's <laughs> Quiet Storm in the middle there. Quiet Storm Marcus over here. <sighs> just the moderator, man. <laughs> What's up, guys? How's it going? I'm blessed. Hit you, hit you with the Christian knees. Damn, Chris, yo, I'm yeah, big, I hate the Christian knees. I'm blessed. Everybody's blessed. Blessed and highly favored. I'm blessed and highly favored. <laughs> <laughs> I got a guy who always say that. Every time I say what's up to him. That's he when said, you, I'm humble, thankful. That's grateful. when you know they're going through drama. Blessed and highly favored. <laughs> that's when you know life is upside down. Right, I'm blessed. Blessed. All right. All right. That's when you're in the middle of the storm. <laughs> I'm blessed. Because <laughs> you, you don't want no questions. Yeah, <laughs> Are you sure, brother? <laughs> I'm blessed. I'm Anything blessed. I could pray for you for? Yeah. <laughs> if they come on and say, yo, my wife just left me. Brother, what happened? <laughs> I'm blessed. But I'm if blessed. you say I'm blessed, you'd be like, all right. <laughs> oh, you leave them alone. Oh. You leave them alone. That's the difference. Right. Because okay. you're mm-hmm. good. Yeah, you're good. <laughs> you're good. You're good. Yeah, sounds good. So how y'all doing, though? I'm blessed. <laughs> <laughs> perfect. Perfect timing. That's exactly what I want. I'm blessed, man. <laughs> um... <laughs> I'm yeah, very man. Blessed. So, back to finish up uh, Genesis chapter three. Um, yeah. How y'all feel uh, about Genesis three so far? I think this, to me, I think this is probably one of the most important chapters in the Bible. I'm kind of obsessed with this chapter. Mm. I read it all the time because this is the fall. Yeah. And, you know, for you to not repeat mistakes in life, you got to see where you fell off at. Mm-hmm. So when I'm always, you know, I always find myself going back to this chapter and kind of rereading it a million times and dissecting it because I just feel like this is the um, the origin of sin. This is when sin was let into the world. Yeah. And every everything that we see in this world is a um, result of what happened here. Everything, yep. Yeah. So, I agree. That's you know, it. That's a great explanation. I, I, I feel the same way because I think it's very similar to John chapter three, mm-hmm. you know, where everything hinges on this chapter right here, because without this chapter, we don't have a Bible because all the rest of Genesis from chapter four, all the way up until Revelation is as a result of chapter three. So without understanding chapter three, you're reading Isaiah or Matthews. It really doesn't make any sense. You have to understand the fall. Mm-hmm. You have to understand the origin of sin before you could get to, you know, the gospel. Like you can't even understand the gospel unless you know that you're a sinner. Right. So this that that's why I totally agree with you. Everything hinges on this chapter. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like what would be the what would be the point? Like, right? Mm-hmm. Right. Like why did Jesus have to die? Right. That was serious. Mm-hmm. So, you know, you we're getting the story um of why he had to do it because right. that that was just as serious um and that was the only way so mm-hmm. we're we getting into that so um you know with chapter two we really got into um this really good discussion on marriage right as we read about you know adam being introduced to his wife and you know the lord putting him to sleep and out of out of adam you know the lord created eve his wife Mm -hmm. and he presented his wife to him and in chapter 2 verse 24 adam you know it says therefore a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife and they shall become one flesh and you know we spoke about the intentions of marriage the intentions that god had for marriage that it would be 
you know, monogamous, mm -hmm. right? Unity, solidarity. That was the whole point. That never changed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, we saw that, you know, it also mentioned that they were naked and there was no shame, right? And, and the openness and the trust mm -hmm. in that, you know? So then we, we got into chapter three, you know, as the story continued of the fall. Um, so we, we, we read about the, the serpent coming in to deceive the woman. Um, we spoke about that briefly and, and um, you know, him twisting, him twisting the truth of God. Yeah. Right. And, and, um, deceiving Eve. And, you know, eventually she went and offered it also to her husband. Mm -hmm. Um, we know that he wasn't deceived. He willfully, uh, par partook of the fruit. And I believe we left, uh, I want to say 14 we left, but let's, let's go back and read from, let's read from eight to 14. I, I see I just before you moved on I'm just thinking about um I was thinking about just the first lie you know the, the the how Satan came in and he dropped the first lie and the first lie was against um there was no judgment like there would be no judgment for disobeying God mm -hmm. and I think about just us as mankind you know uh people you know when they think about eternity when they think about after death um they don't think of it for them not to choose Christ is because you think there is no judgment mm -hmm. for living a life that's disobedient to Christ. It's like you're the life that you live is a result of you believing a lie mm -hmm. that you won't have to meet your maker, that you won't have to see a judge, you know? And when you think about Christ in revelation is he's sitting on a judgment seat, you know, mm -hmm. but I'm looking at Eve buying into that lie of, you know, even Adam buying into the lie that there's not going to be no judgment. Like when you read, you know, he says it. He said, you shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And, you know, when he said, you surely shall not die. You know, that was the first lie. Yeah, yeah that was a straight up lie. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. that was a straight up lie. Like, yo, you surely shall not. You know, you're not going to die. And Adam and Eve believing that. And, <laughs> and they believed that they would not be a consequence for disobeying God. And I mm -hmm. think a lot of people don't choose Christ because... I mean, a lot of people don't choose Christ because they don't really believe that there's going to be a consequence for sin. Mm. And, and that was the thing, because judgment was plainly stated by God, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right? When he, you know, God told Adam, yo, the day you eat of this fruit, you will surely die. Right, right. So it got to the point where who are you going to believe, right? Are you going to believe the lies of the serpent or, or let's say they didn't know it was a lie. Now you're faced with two options mm -hmm. all right so now the question is all right who's telling a lie and who's telling the truth right. Right. and obviously you know they made the wrong choice yeah so and, um and, and just ahead. another one more other thing just what led led her to eat of the fruit you know you think about like how we said before like the lust of the eyes the lust of the flesh and the pride mm -hmm. of life and as you read through the bible you see that the downfall of any person you know um, to the point where they disobey God is because you gave into one of those things. Mm. You gave in into the lust, of, lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. And even when I think back in my life, when I look back in my life, everywhere that I went wrong, it had to do with something there. It had to do with either the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. Mm -hmm. You know, just like what John says, and even temptation with Christ. You know, um, where he was like, uh, turn the turn the stone into bread. Mm -hmm. You know, and Christ was like, man shall not live by bread alone. Where he was like, you know, jump off, you know, uh, jump cliff. off that, that cliff and mm -hmm. you're not going to die. You know, the angels is going to save you. And he's like, you shall not tempt the Lord. It's like those three things. If you look, if anybody look at their life and look at all the the points where they went wrong is because you gave in to one of those things. And you got to understand that was the thing that gave, you know, that let Eve and Adam into, you know, partaking of the fruit. I mean, that, that's the three, you know, the, the enemy's arsenal is not that deep. Right, right. Those are the three things that he could tempt you with or that he's going to come at you with. Right. And every, every sin, you could put it in one of those buckets. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that, that scene with Christ in the wilderness, that was all Satan got. That's it. He's going right. to hit you with one of those three. Right. Right? Lust of the flesh, 
lust of the eyes, pride of life. Mm. All right, he he's gonna package it and you know a thousand different, different ways. ways. That's right. <laughs> but it's it's still the same thing, right. right? And and Christ left us um, the way to combat those lies, mm-hmm. the way to combat the attacks of the enemy, and it's through the Word of God. Amen. And that was the same option they had over here, right? right? Correct. Adam and Eve, they had the Word of God, and that's what they were supposed to use to fight the lies of the. When when serpent came, it was like they should have been like, nah. This is what God. This said. is what God said. That's it. That's it. And then high tail, <laughs> <laughs> like Joseph. I don't know if they had special sound effects back then, but they would hit him with a pshow. I'm out. And yo, I'll be out. Listen, right. sometimes you gotta be out. It says right. free. It says flee. Flee. <laughs> That's when it comes to sexual immorality. Right like, yo, flee. Run, and it says though. resist. Like these words, resist, resist the, the devil. devil, and he shall flee. He shall, he shall flee, flee from you. <laughs> Like you gotta understand, it's a it's a tug of war, it's a battle. You know, it's not right. gonna, it's just not gonna be easy thing. And then one more thing is like what Satan sold them was freedom. Mm. Like he was like, you know, when you it, he sold them that, and then he sold them trying to be like God. You know, when he when he hit him, and he was like, he said, yo, you know, when you eat, when you um, you know, God God is holding this back from you because he knows you're gonna be just like him when you eat of it. You know, and these things that Satan be selling mankind, selling people freedom, like yo, you know, I remember back in the days when um, you know, you was I was searching for for truth. You know, you found the, you remember the book, The Secret. <laughs> remember when you had to, you know, you had all this new age self help. I remember going through that stage of, and you thought, you know, when you found something in one of these books, it was like, yo, yo, I I know the truth, so now I'm free. <laughs> like everybody else is a slave, and I'm free. And right. it was like this is what Satan was selling them. When in action, he was he was show, he was kind of telling them that God has you guys under, and you guys are kind of like slaves. And I'm gonna free you with this this knowledge. You eat mm. from this, you're gonna be free. When in actuality, he was making them slaves. Mm. That's right. You know, and it was just all a lie for the, so that they can be under him, so that they could be under his spell. And it's just you know, I, I find these things very important because there's you know, I know before I came to Christ, and I know there's people out there who's searching for truth. You think you're going to find freedom when you're just, you know, reading all this different knowledge. Um, esot- did I say esoteric? You right. know, when you're thinking about all these things and, um, you know, um, you're searching. But in actuality, the true freedom is the word of God. Just sticking. If mm-hmm. Adam and Eve had just stuck to the word of God, they would have still been in paradise free. The freedom that they had, even when you read before this, like they had freedom to eat of every tree. Mm-hmm. Right. That was freedom. Like he was like, you could eat of every tree, but Satan sold them where you can't eat from this tree. Well, you're not really free. Well, in actuality, he was trying to make them a slave. So you mean if I put the Lambo out into the universe, I'm not going to get a Lambo? <laughs> the, un- the universe is not going <laughs> to. I thought the universe worked for me. The universe, <laughs> the universe don't work for me. I, if God created the universe, right? We we, we read well, no no listen. I just want you to do I want you to do simple math, right? Listen. If God created I, the universe, right? I thought the and universe you know, was on my payroll, dog. Yeah. If I if I told the universe I want a Lambo, eventually the universe will give me a Lambo. I thought that's how it worked. So that's why somebody told me. you gotta you gotta what it, you name it and then you claim claim it. it. Listen, you know how many names I gave to that Lambo. <laughs> I say, I say, ain't no Lambo in my driveway, dog. Word up. <laughs> you remember the the um, dominion that Adam had, right? Got the mm-hmm. sea, land, and the heavens, right? Mm-hmm. Where the birds fly. Mm-hmm. Stay, stay out of, <laughs> stay, stay out, out of space. The, uh, stay out of the Milky Way. <laughs> <laughs> but whatever. Yeah, but um, yeah. So let's let's go from uh, let's go to eight to fourteen. No, no. Eight. <sighs> yeah, eight is a good start. Yeah, start at eight. Eight. And they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. Then the Lord God called to Adam and said to him, Where are you? So he said, I heard your voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. And he said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree of which I commanded you that you should not eat? Then the man said, The woman whom you gave to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I ate. And the Lord God said to the woman, What is this you have done? 
the woman said, the serpent deceived me and I ate. All right, stop right there. Actually, before we get into 14. Um, yeah, thoughts. What, do you, what are your thoughts, Ange? Hmm. Like I said, man, I, I think um, Adam had a job to do and he wasn't doing it correctly. He wasn't overseeing his wife. Um, and no, I just, a lot of people, they blame Eve and I'm not one of those people. And I do think that Adam should have, um, stood in, um, you know, directly in front of his wife with the serpent speaking to them and, um, and, and stood in there as the husband, the head of the household. Mm. Okay. Okay. I agree with you. Totally agree. Um, one of the things I like is that, um, well, I don't like, but you seeing, um, you immediately seeing this human nature rise up when you're confronted with um, shortcomings, when you're confronted with sin and failure. Uh, immediately, uh, he blames Eve. You know, which well, is well, let's go before that because I think we're starting to see the characteristics of a fallen fall. nature. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Right. So yeah, this is this is yeah. I like that you you brought that point out. It is that immediately they ate of the fruit and they're already ashamed. So you already see they've reached um, the fallen nature, which we you know all every single mankind is born with today. That yeah. fallen nature, you know, um, that dead spirit. So now because of the shame and the guilt, so the first thing human nature does, the sinful flesh, um, he blames the, the other person. You know, uh, you immediately go, instead of looking at yourself, um, you, he, so he blamed Eve. Mm -hmm. And then what happened with, and then Eve, and then he, God went and asked Eve, what did Eve do? Instead of owning up to it, oh, it's because of the serpent, mm -hmm. right? And this is the same thing that you see in uh, human nature today in society today we always have excuses you know whether it be oh it's because of my upbringing it's because of my family because of my house or because of lack of family mm -hmm. you know because of my community you know uh i end up into drug dealing i end up into stealing cars or what have you or it's because my school system was bad mm -hmm. did you want to teach me um two times two properly you know or so you have all these excuses because of you know the authorities is because of, you know, this, the police is because of the government is because of this is because of the, so people are always looking f to blame others and not only blame others. When he said that, not only he said the woman, he blames the woman, then he s blames God, the right. woman that you gave me. Same thing you hear today is <laughs> God's fault. Like, why is there so much death? Why is this, why is God allowing this? So you are seeing that this is the fallen nature. Mm -hmm. It's always to, Put the finger on everyone else instead of taking responsibility um, for their own actions. And and I see with, with with what happened here, it's the free will. One free will is being exercised, but two, you see both parties what the, what their responsibility was. Mm -hmm. Adam's responsibility, like Angelo said, was um, was his wife. God mm -hmm. gave him his wife. And you see, he blames it on the responsibility mm. because that was your responsibility. So where you fell short at, it was like, that's what you're trying to cover up, mm. you know? And then with Eve, it was, you're supposed to be listening to your husband. That, that's right. why she was like, the serpent deceived me. No, mm. that, that wasn't, it's not up to the serpent. You're Even right. what, whatever the serpent said, your job was to listen to your husband. You're right. So you're seeing the roles that, the responsibility that both of them had. And now you're seeing how both is at fault. Right. You know, and that's why that's what they cover up. Mm -hmm. You know, that's why Eve is like, no, I was deceived. How was, why were you deceived? You were supposed to be listening to your husband. Right. And Adam is like, yo, it's the response is the woman you gave me. Yeah. That was your responsibility. That's right. your role. So you're seeing where right. they fell short at is what they covered up. Yo, you know what? I really like that point that you said about their roles. Cause when you see, you're seeing um, a flipping of the roles, right? Because, God is in charge of Adam. Adam was supposed to oversee and take care of and love Eve. And then but mankind is above all the you know, dominion of all the animals on earth. Mm -hmm. So here we come where Adam goes against God, who is his head, who is his leader. Right. So you've seen that role being reversed. The woman who was supposed to be taking care, I mean, supposed to be, you know, submitting to Adam. She, you know, goes against him. And then the, the one that they're supposed to be, have total dominion over the earth, the serpent is the one that changed 
and took control and got them to do what he wanted. So the so snake you, is the head now. So the now serpent the snake, is the head. Exactly. So, exactly. so it's a totally total reverse. Role reversal. Total role reversal. And that's why when it comes to the curse, everybody get theirs. Right. There's nobody <clears throat> exempt. Right. Because mm. everybody had a role to play in this. Right. And but you see the first reaction is I didn't have no role to play in it. It's yeah. not, it wasn't me. It was that person. Oh, it wasn't me. It was no dog. Everybody had a role to play in this. So now we see the the um forfeiting that dominion rule that mankind had mm -hmm. is being forfeited over to the serpent. Yeah, right. And obviously we know that the serpent, you know, the spirit behind it, whether the serpent, the serpent was demonically possessed, mm -hmm. right? We know the spirit behind it was Satan, right? right? But one thing we, we saw was, um, right, their eyes were open, shame, mm -hmm. and then they try to cover up their shame by themselves. And, right. that, and that's what happens. Right, when you're trying to cover up your sin by yourself. And then when they heard God coming, something that they were used to, that that faith and fellowship is now changed into fear. Mm. So now their relationship with mm. God is predicated on this fear now. Right. So they went and hid themselves. So now, you know, God just being uh, and, and you you see the effects. So so all of these, I'm noticing the effects of a sinful nature, mm -hmm. right? Fear replaces faith mm -hmm. and fellowship. Mm -hmm. And even one thing that I see too from from what you were saying is um, just how sin separates us from God. Mm -hmm. And when before they they sin, when they when they heard the God walking in the garden, right? They probably like ran to him. You know, and said, "Oh, where is he? Like, let me fellowship with God." Mm -hmm. Now, and and that's in our everyday lives when we're living righteously, and you know, we we desire that, you know, that intimacy with the Lord until we're in a bad stretch where we're sinning, and we're like, "Oh, I, I, I'm not worthy to read the Word. I'm not worthy to pray." You know, and then you mm -hmm. sort of separate yourself a little bit from God. And here, after they sin, they hid from Him. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's just sin just um, destroys that union that we have with God. Yeah. And, and, you know, God just being just real, he, he goes through an investigation and he asks questions, mm -hmm. right? So he initiates. He's the first to initiate mm -hmm. this relationship, mm -hmm. right? And we know God, he knows everything, but he investigate the cause, all right? Where, what happened, and who. Right. Like he asks these questions not only so that he could give them an opportunity to just come clean, just fess up and repent, but he's also just and fair. Like, I'm going to get all the information out. Everything is going to come out because judgment is going to come. You're not going to escape that mm -hmm. because he's holy and, and he's just, right? But he's also loving and he's also merciful. Um, and we're going to see how those two things um, are able to coexist. And just how he moves. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? We see how those things are able to coexist. So, you know, obviously when he asked that question, we're seeing, we're still seeing the effects of the falling nature with, mm -hmm. with Adam's answer, right? Mm -hmm. A lot of eyes, because that's what he's concerned with now. Mm -hmm. It's I, 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 right? I heard you. I was afraid, you know, I, I ate. Blah, blah, blah. Now yeah. everything is self-centered. Mm. It's about the ego. That's just, you're just seeing the, the effects of this fallen nature just coming out. You see the love of self. That's what it is. Yeah. Um, so now, all right, I'm going to talk to the woman. He, he, he asked Adam the question. You know, again, he, he asked the woman the question. And obviously, you know, we're seeing them moving like the being that they just aligned themselves with. Right. Now it's a distortion of truth, mm -hmm. which is what the serpent did. Mm -hmm. So now you're no longer moving in light. You're moving in darkness now. Mm -hmm. And now you're seeing that characteristics come out in how you reply. Mm -hmm. Distortion of truth now. So you're already showing who, who your alliance is with right now and whose character is coming out of you is, is lies. Mm -hmm. Yo, I got a a, a quick um, this there's, there's a you know that Pastor Billy Sunday he made this 
a great statement. He says, an excuse is the skin of a reason stuffed with a lie. He mm-hmm. says, that's what an excuse is. It's just a lie, cover it up. That's it. You know, so, and this is what we're seeing. Mm-hmm. We're seeing, um, this is where these excuses and reasons are lying, mm-hmm. where it came from. Like you said, they are lining up with their master now, right. the father of lies. A line, yep. And, and it's dope. When he gets the serpent, he don't even ask the serpent question, dog. Yeah, straight judgment, because he knew better. He, mm. he, he, you know, he gave the man the opportunity to, to, to come out, right, and, and repent. Because mm-hmm. God already knows. Right. And he did the same for the woman. But for the serpent, you know better. Dog, I'm going to get straight to the point with you. Because I know you. And you knew exactly, yeah. You, I, I know what, I know, Doug, you've you been, exactly. you've been, you've been <laughs> kicking up dust. Word up. <laughs> from up there. From up there. Causing right up. trouble. Yep, right. Now, yo, this is it. This is judgment for 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 the serpent. Mm-hmm. So, um, let's let's read let's read the judgment for the serpent, which is fourteen to fifteen. So the Lord God said to the serpent, "Because you have done this, you are cursed more than all cattle, and more than every beast of the field. On your belly you shall go, and you shall eat dust all the days of your life." And I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your seed and her seed. He shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel. Mm-hmm. So now we spoke about um, blessing, right? Blessing being uh, to have the productivity of God mm-hmm. and to be able to conquer death. Mm-hmm. Right. When, when um, God created everything, everything was good. Created man, everything was good. That means death wasn't going to overpower them. And that means everything they did was going to be productive. Like God would have made everything productive. So now we're seeing a curse now. And that curse, it starts off with the serpent, which is interesting. So it gives me the idea that this creature, right, the serpent, however it looked before this, um, it's it's cursed to to crawl on his belly. So maybe it was upright. I, I, I don't know. I don't know how the serpent looked before, right. but whatever that creature or that animal did to align itself with this uh, uh, demonic Satan, he got in trouble for that too. Mm. And <laughs> the serpent got cursed. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's weird. I never noticed that. Right. Because Satan is not crawling around. <laughs> Satan is not crawling around on his belly. If yeah. Right. You, you understand what I'm saying? Right. So this, you know, whatever deal, whatever alignment that the serpent, he he got judged too mm. in it. That's right. what I'm seeing. Um, you think there was an uh, an alignment with the serpent and Satan, or you, do you think Satan just came and said, "I'm going to use this creature"? That could have been it too. It could have been. I'm both. just wondering. Yeah, but the been. but the creature got he got cursed for partaking in it. So what? Oh yeah, I, I see he, that, but I'm just wondering if he had a, if he even had a choice in the matter. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, we don't know. I mean that that's a that's a good point, but I'm I'm even thinking, um, just like you said, before the creature probably was walking up, right? Upright. Maybe mm-hmm. like even when you look at a snake now, as it slithers, it has like it's on its belly, but its head, like you see a lot of times, like the serpent, they'll have their head up. So mm-hmm. you don't know. The creature probably was a creature that probably walked up with his head upright. You know, it probably looked proud. Mm-hmm. It probably was like a creature that looked proud. And God probably did that as a reminder. Like, you see how the serpent before Satan entered it? It was a creature that looked proud and looked this and, and looked prestigious or whatever. It probably looked good. But now it's being cursed. And I think um, yeah. even the word that was used is um, shining one. Mm-hmm. Like it probably, you know, it probably gave an aura of prestige or whatever before it looks like how we see it now. Right. right. And, and whether whether or not it aligned itself willingly or unwillingly, it received judgment. Right. Mm-hmm. Eve was deceived. Mm-hmm. It wasn't willful. She was actually deceived. And dog, justice has to be served because mm-hmm. God is just. Right. So, um, what's what was the what was the sentence for the actual uh, Satan? Uh, the enmity. Well, he says, "I'm gonna put enmity between you and the woman, and between your seed and her seed. Mm-hmm. 
he shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel. And just to think about Satan, the way he came to her, like, was, you know, like you said, it was this alignment to align yourself with Eve and to align yourself with mankind. And God is like, the judgment is enmity. Now y'all going to have beef. Mm, right. You know, so before whatever plot it was for you to have, you know, mankind on your side. Right. Now it's just total enmity now to the mm -hmm. point where even your seeds where this is generational. It's just not between um, Eve and the serpent. But this is going to go down generational, you know, from generation to generation to generation. This is the kind of, you know, y'all going to have beef, but. You know, it gets deeper than that. And I'll, I'll mm. let one of you guys bring it up. So the plan, the plan that you was looking to execute mm -hmm. and having everybody on your side, I'm going to mess that up. Mess it all up. Mm. So now you got the will of God. You got the will of Satan. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to have seven billion wills because <laughs> everybody's going to have their own will. They're not going to automatically align with you because right. now it's just beef. Mm -hmm. right. And ultimately, it's, it's speaking about the seed of the woman. You know, it's, it's speaking about, you know, um, Jesus Christ and the seed of the enemy trying to destroy that, trying to kill him, you know, and, and that that you could you could follow that thread throughout all the scriptures. That's what it is. Right. So you could look at it both ways. You could look at um, I'm going to mess up this alignment, this this uh, this allegiance you was trying to, to you thought they was all going to just fall under you nah now it's going to be beef and everybody's going to have their own will and you're going to have to continue to work right right because yeah. now you got you got you know everybody have their own little will right everybody wants to do their own thing they're not they're not automatically going to do what you want yeah. and this is the and this is the great verse right here word 15 because this is this is also known as the proto evangelium mm -hmm. you know this is the very first announcement of the gospel mm -hmm. you know like like you said this whole woman um the enemy between you and the woman between your offspring and her offspring and as you read in other different versions it says the woman's seed and we all know that women don't have seed right right so we know this is already alluding to the virgin birth right mary so right here you seeing the beginning of John three sixteen, you know the 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 virgin birth of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. So right here, and the reason why I really love this uh, the scripture is because when you get all these people that come out with the lies and say that oh uh, Christianity is a carbon copy of Osiris and Heru or the ha uh, Hammurabi code, mm. um, or, you know, it was a, a Greek mythology, Egypt. or, or Egyptology, Egyptology, or it was a Roman um, fictitious thing. It did, they all knew everyone was waiting for this Messiah. Right. Everyone was waiting. They mm. knew this. They heard this, and then through word of mouth, they came and they distorted the gospel, which already was, that already pronounced, in right. Genesis 3.15. In, in the beginning, it was already pronounced. Right. And then you just got all these carbon copies. So everything else is a carbon copy of Christianity. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and like you said, is um, follow the seed. You know, when as we start to go through Genesis and through the Old Testament and all the way till we get to Christ being born, this was it. This was you just following the seed mm -hmm. as you read through the Bible. Mm -hmm. This is the verse that, you know, it's, it's, the, it's the theme. It sets the... The, the the theme for the whole Bible as you start to read it this this verse right here right, explain explain to them about what the bruising the head and bruise the heel so and he shall uh, other translations say he shall crush your head okay right that's that's fatal that's a fatal blow right um you getting your your heel bruise is not a fa fatal blow mm. so we're seeing the judgment for um Satan. Mm -hmm. right. your, your your head is going to be crushed and you, you will be destroyed. That's going to be your fate. Mm -hmm. And that sentence was pronounced back at the garden. That's right. It just has to play out. Mm -hmm. You know? Because a, a plan, right, as we, we spoke about um, a, a few episodes ago, God already committed to this plan because God obviously already knew. So this had to play out. 
Mm-hmm. But judgment for the serpent has already been um, the 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 gavel already hit. Mm. That's it for you. You're done. Yep. Right. So now you're on. I forgot. What do you call that when people, you know, you get bagged, you get tried, you're guilty, but then you got to report. <laughs> you got to report um, to start your sentencing. Mm. Sometimes you get a little three months yeah, yeah, to handle your about. affairs, right. oh, <laughs> and then you got it. So, so that's kind of like kind of like no, not arraignment. It's not arraignment. Yeah, I don't know what they call. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, don't, I don't deal with the court stuff. <laughs> you a law abiding citizen. Yeah, I, I stay away. I stay away from that stuff. I stay away from, from the, you know. A law abiding citizen. I pay my taxes. <laughs> nah, but that's exactly what it is. Where he shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel. Like you know, when Christ died on the cross, that was a blow. You know, Christ having to come as a man. You know, being born um, and living on on earth, and he stripped himself of everything. You got to think about that. He stripped himself of everything to come down and to um, accomplish this mission. Mm-hmm. You know, crushing the head of Satan, and he took a blow because, you know, even in his resurrected body, you know, he has holes in his hands. Mm-hmm. You know, he he went back to heaven with that body, but right. it's still like when you read in Revelation, it says, um, you know, John saw a lamb as if it was slain. slain. So, you know, that was a bruise to the hill, but, you know, through um, his death and his resurrection and being that unblemished lamb, he was he able to conquer death and crush Satan's head. Right. You know, I kind of look at this. I look at this as the tale of two gardens. You know, you remember that that story, the tale of two cities with Charles Dickens with, you know, the wars between was it England and France or whatever. You read that? Huh? You read that book? Yeah, I read parts of it. You know, but you know, as that famous, that whole famous thing, you know, when he goes through, you know, this was the beginning of age. This was the was end of the age. The best of days. Yeah, the best yeah, of days, the, the worst, worst of days. days. Yeah, that whole famous thing. Mm-hmm. So I see this exactly. I didn't read it. That's just the only part. <laughs> that's, yo, that's why, I'm, that's why I had to ask him if he read it because I don't remember <laughs> reading yeah, it. I, I think I probably read that. What's that yellow thing? The the short notes. I forget what they call them. The cliff notes. <laughs> yeah. But the whole thing is that over here, we seeing here in this garden, the Garden of Eden, this is where we lost everything. You know, mm-hmm. this is where sin entered into the world um, through uh, and death entered into the world. And mm-hmm. it is in that garden of Gethsemane. This is where Jesus was obedient to the father. Right. Mm-hmm. And through that, he won the victory over sin and death. Right. As long as we put our faith and trust in him. So I like looking at it as the, the two gardens. Yeah, uh, the one thing I like too, man, is just w- within minutes of his perfect creations breaking his heart and, you know, being disobedient. He already initiated a plan of mercy, you know, for the rest of humankind, you know, with Jesus Christ. You know, when he says here about Christ bruising um, Satan's head. And I just think of just the goodness of God, man, just how we constantly break his heart. And he's always there with mercy and with compassion. Mm -hmm. And I just don't ever get enough of that. And like you said, God always got a plan. Mm -hmm. You just got to go to him. You know, and you just see, you know, a lot of times when it don't happen, it's because of pride. Mm. Like God already has it. Like he says, he always has a way of escape. Even before you could get tangled up in a sin mm-hmm. or get tangled up in a situation, a mess. But even after that, he still has a plan after you do it. Yeah. Like that, you know, he could restore and he could recover. But exactly. It's about humility or pride. Are you willing to humble yourself mm. under God? Amen. And come to him and be like, okay, I messed up. You know what plan you have and god he'll start having a he'll start putting that plan in motion mm-hmm. but it what triggers it is humility All right so mm. so the gauntlet has been dropped it's war now mm. All right it's war now the drama is about to start because satan just got his he he just got his judgment and you're not gonna escape that it's only a matter of time so now um uh the punishment always fits the crime. God is not cruel. So now we go to the woman. So to the woman, verse 16, he said, I will greatly multiply your sorrow and your conception. In pain you shall bring forth children. Your desire shall be for your husband, and he shall rule over you. What do you guys think of that? Again, just... um uh, enmity, kind of like this beef. You know, he's like, you want to bring sin into the world? Everything was um, order. Everything was unity. But mm-hmm. now you have division. So now he's, you see the judgment with division between the serpent and the woman. 
now you're seeing the judgment between you know the woman and the man mm -hmm. you know and he's like you know and th that word where it says desire your desire shall be for your husband that's the same word that's used with um cain and abel where he told cain um you know sin is at your door and its desire is to rule over you mm -hmm. you know that's that's the desire that's the desire of um you know that was the desire of sin over cain you know so when when you're seeing this with eve is like you know the natural role is for the man to be the head but now because of you let sin into this into the world now you have this curse you know mm -hmm. for for women that it's going to be hard for you to just let the men take the headship. Mm -hmm. Now it's going to be a struggle. Now you see this power struggle and you see it with the war, war with sexes. Mm -hmm. You know, you see in it throughout history where it's always this struggle between men and women for power mm -hmm. when it wasn't supposed to be like that. It was, there was a natural order of things. So when Adam saw his wife, mm -hmm. right, he, he, he kicked this crazy bar, right? Showing that love and that union and that mm -hmm. unity. And now with this curse, you're starting to see frustrations in relationships, right? And right. for the woman, that frustration is going to be in relationships in the home, mm -hmm. right? And again, that, that word um, is dominate, right? You're going to want to dominate your husband. You're going to mm -hmm. want to dominate the man. Control him. And mm -hmm. also um, conception, right? So, so two things, right? Your sorrow is going to be multiplied. Right. Um, and your conception. I read something where it was like, um, it says, you know, Eve gave birth to sin. You know, when she, when you ate from the tree mm -hmm. of good, like you gave birth to, and it's like kind of going to be a constant reminder of every mm -hmm. time you give birth, like this is what you gave birth to into this world. Mm. That's, that's interesting you know i'm looking at it like it's a constant reminder because you're thinking about being fruitful and multiply was the first thing that was given to adam and eve that was the first as soon as they were you know they that were was created, it. it was like be fruitful and multiply that was her meaning that was a purpose right yeah that and was it's like yeah. and it's like now when you when you're doing this thing that should have been just natural and should have been you know always a joyous like even the whole process through now it's going to be kind of hard you know mm. I mean, possible. I don't know. Yeah. Um, I mean, that's what it's, it's it, not after I read it and I was like, okay, that I mean, kind of because yeah. you got to understand this is a curse, right? You know, that's what you have to be reminded of. Like, this is a curse. This is not how it's supposed to be. You know, so you're thinking about if, if sin was ne never came into the world, every time women gave birth, it would have, you know, the process would have been Pain, painless, painless, painless. Yeah. right? It probably would have, you don't even know, probably would have been even good like this right. this feeling but now it's a curse mm. you know you're 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 having babies that are being born to die right as soon as a child is born it's just countdown until till they die because everybody died because of sin mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and now something that was supposed to uh, um, be blessed in terms of bringing life, it's done in pain now, mm -hmm. right? And now frustration with relationships and now your desire to dominate your husband is gonna um, aggravate that frustration even more because mm -hmm. he's not gonna go for it. Mm -hmm. Right. You understand know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's why it says, and he shall rule over you. Yeah, like he's going to be like, no, dog, plan, what are you? Your plan is to wear the <laughs> pants, and he's going to be like, nah, dog, I'm a man. Right. Like, the, mm, And the man go. the man is not supposed to dominate the woman either. Right. Correct. The man is supposed to lead the woman. That's right. two totally different things. Right. right. You know, but she has this thing, right, which is, again, we're, we're noticing the effects of this falling nature. We're noticing the effects of sin. And all the thing that is that it does, and one of the things is this desire to dominate mm. the man, but the man's natural reaction is gonna be resentment, and then I'm gonna dominate you, and I'm gonna run all over you, mm. right? Because <laughs> men are savages, and, and that's what they'll do, and that's what happens, right? When men constantly run over women, right, right. and abuse them, and and not um, treating women the way they should be treated as delicate, as loving them, as 
this fragile vase right. like cold airs or even right. looking at them and i, I like because it's like now the light like you said like now you're supposed to be looking at the husband as the leader which is not a bad thing it's not a bad but thing. now you're looking at him like he's a tyrant mm-hmm. Cause, because he because he is because he's playing this role but I'm, I'm just i'm just showing you because we're dealing with the woman right now that's what i'm saying like right. we're dealing with through the eyes of the woman because this is what this is who he's dealing with you know so through her eyes where you're looking at a man who's leading you that's his natural role but in your eyes you're looking at it like it's dominance yeah it's but, tyrancy right but my my right. question is is the man gonna lead you right because you that's what you were supposed to do right right but you gotta understand now men being resentful right. men being that's gonna fight back now i'm gonna run all over right you. right because there's this war Right. And if you look, yeah, now it's, it's War of the Roses war or the, it's War of the Sexes. Right. So you get Mars right. and Venus. Right. Yeah. So right. Now, now you're looking at the rise of feminism. Right. Correct. And now you're looking at the rise of chauvinism. Right. Right. Yeah. And then that's just what happens. Mm-hmm. Right. So you, you go yeah. from, from having, instead of it being a, a relationship of love and cherishing, yeah. it's just straight drama now. It's not straight or a, a relationship of two becoming one because you you remember when they first saw each other right. it was like two is becoming one or even the man's reaction because you don't get the woman's reaction you get the man's mm. reaction when he saw eve and it mm. was like i want to become one with this person mm-hmm. you know i want to everything that i the way i and it's, it's just like when you go into ephesians it's like it tells you like husbands the same way you love yourself love your wife Mm-hmm. You know, so that feeling that he had, like you said, now you're starting to see sin in the world and how they're looking at each other. Right. You know? Exactly, because he immediately throw, threw her under the bus when God <laughs> came to her. <laughs> Dog, right, so run, right. Right. run all over them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Abuse them. Right. Right. Use them. And dudes will take it to the next level. Right. right. Yep. right. Yeah. And the thing is, and, and we, we just see it in like your typical, um, like if you look at a business or an organization, right? Like, a lot of people get have problems with order, you know, where there's a CEO of a company, there's a CEO, CIO, or president, vice president. And, you know, you go down the line, and they all have equal value, right? But they all have different roles. And that's the whole thing, that God created this this uh, this role for everyone to play. And like you said, like the, the man, suppo- the husband's supposed to be that servant leader, you know, um, just walking along with his wife and you know being that spiritual leader mm-hmm. and the woman i'm um, being able to submit because she's being loved by a spiritual right, leader right. but now like with sin entering in what ends up happening is that now it becomes like you said this tyranny where he's not i'm not going to lead you i'm going to dominate over you like you said this is the the entrance of chauvinism and her saying no i'm not going to let you just be a tyrant over my life right. um and to lead me in the wrong path and lead me to destruction so i'm gonna show you what's right and this is the beginning of feminism. So now, mm. but but I don't know if it's a cause and effect thing. Okay. I think it's just the fall in nature. Right. Your, right. Des- right. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Your desire yeah. is desire. just going to be to right. try to dominate the man. Yeah. Yep. Because of sin. Right. And I'm glad you brought Ephesians 5. That's the answer to this. Yep. Right. Your men love your wives like Christ loved the church. Wives respect and submit to your husband. That's it. That's how That's you're going to counter these this fallen nature that try to rise up in you. Yeah. Right. That's why it's contrary to the world. Right. And you know what I'm saying? And that's why <laughs> I always, I look at it like, like even bringing children into this, you know, like it says in the last days, children will be disobedient Obedient. to parents. Mm-hmm. Like the natural role as a child is to what? The Ten Commandments. Honor your mother right. and your father. Mm-hmm. You know, and it's not because your mother and your father is like greater than you. No, this is just the <laughs> roles on you playing a part in the family. Mm-hmm. If you're a child, your mother and your father, this is the role they play. Mm-hmm. You know, they lead you, they teach you. And it always reminds me of God in itself. You know, I think I said the last episode, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Like you said, they all are God, all equal, but the roles they play. You're right. And and I think it's because of sin, we look at these roles as that's why it's hard for people to understand the Trinity. Right. Because in this fallen world, you're looking at it. If somebody is leading you, uh, they're greater than you. No. Right. That's just the role, bro. Like you said, right. it's the CEO of a company. Like, everybody can't be the quarterback. 
Exactly. You know, just because he's the quarterback, that don't mean he's the he's greater than everybody else on the team. No, right. we need everybody on the team. That's just his role to call the plays, to throw the ball, to lead the team. Mm-hmm. So let's let's read from uh, let's read up to nineteen, Ange. Then to Adam he said, "Because you have heeded the voice of your wife and have eaten from the tree of which I commanded you, saying you shall not eat of it, cursed is the ground for your sake. In toil you shall eat of it all the days of your life." Both thorns and thistles it shall bring forth for you, and you shall eat the herb of the field. In the sweat of your face you shall eat bread, till you return to the ground. For out of it you were taken, for dust you are, and to dust you shall return. Yo, this mm. is, yo. That's crazy. <laughs> you know what I'm, yo, just reading this now, mm-hmm. like it's real clear. Like you see how you said before, like wait, look at Adam, like, you know, his role as now, he know that you're going to be provider. That's going to be your role as a man. Mm-hmm. You got to provide for the family. But you got to understand, these are curse. These are curses. What do, you, what do you mean? So now, like, you as provider for your, like, you playing this role as going to be provider for your family, now it's going to be a hard thing for you. Why? It's going to be cursed for you because of sin. Yeah. yeah. And, I, 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 and I was thinking about that earlier, too. Um so, like you said, you, you're going to have to work. But work was given to Adam before the fall. Yeah, it was a good thing. It's a good thing. Right. But you know what's cursed? The ground. Right. Mm-hmm. This thing that you were supposed to have this relationship with, dominion over, mm-hmm. now it's going to resist you. Mm. Right. Which is the ground. Right. Now you're going to have to work by the sweat of your brow to provide for your family. Before, you didn't have to work. Right. You didn't have to worry about the ground responding to you. And, right. you know, ground being a metaphor for mm-hmm. you just going out there and providing. Right. Because right. everything was there. The Lord was like, look, yeah. everything. Right. Like the ground watered itself. Right. R- irrigation system. Okay. You probably got up and be like, yo, dog, what am I going to eat today? <laughs> now you get right. up and you be like, yo, dog, what am I going to eat today? <laughs> <laughs> Mm-hmm. No. Totally, <laughs> two totally different meanings. No, right. back in the days, you probably was like Adam was probably like, "What am I gonna pick?" That was the work. Yeah, yeah. the work is like, "Yo, what kind of salad I'm gonna make today? Do I want avocados <laughs> and tomatoes?" But now you guys, I gotta go plant avocados <laughs> and, and tomatoes. It, may, it might not come and up. It might not come up. Well. <laughs> it's gonna come up, and if it comes up, it's gonna come up with thorns and thistles. And this fulfillment, right? This fulfillment and this purpose that was given to you by God to tend the garden, to dominate the earth. Right. Now it's only going to resist. It's only going to resist you. And at the end, that same ground that you're going to dominate, he's going to swallow you up. <laughs> Yo, that ground is going to swallow you up and you're going to go right back into it. What? Guess what? You lose. The what? ground wins. <laughs> what I think about was when, <laughs> Yo, the, when Mike... When you make it sound like that. When, when Mike talked about how the, the just the process how beautiful and elegant it was of the Lord you know forming him out of the dust and mm-hmm. breathing his life into him and he wasn't me- meant to ever go back to that mm-hmm. and now it says here till you return to the ground for out of it you were taken for dust you are and to dust you shall return like that had to hit him so hard to be like wait a minute I wasn't supposed to go back there you or, know what I- or even better like dog you was better than that <laughs> <laughs> Cause I made you out of the dust, but when yeah. I breathe life into you, mm. you became a son of God. But now it's like here's a reality check. Yep. Like you thought you was somebody. You thought you was gonna be like God if you mm. ate from this fruit. Yeah. Your dog, you dust. <sighs> you never be like me. Here's a reminder. You know? yep. Here's a reminder. Like yo, this is what you really are, and mm. that's what happens when you know you 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 um you're out there and you're thinking there's no judgment for what you're going to do mm-hmm. and then judgment come and it's like no you was you was nobody this mm. is who you really are and when you get humbled you know so we seen these natural relationships are just ruined and that's what it right? is right so now now this natural relationship between man and ecology mm. right right there was an effect right the the fall actually affected ecology right. affected creation the earth so you know a lot of people uh you know save the earth save the earth romans what does romans say Ange? i know you one of your favorite books i love it 
but it speaks a lot. about the the, <laughs> the earth the earth just groaning. Yeah. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Waiting to That's see the salvation. Right? Yeah, yeah. No, like, I think it might be Corinthians. Yeah, yeah. where it talks about this, like um, waiting the, with outstretched necks to see the redemption, the, the redemption of the, see who the son of God God's are. God. Right. Yeah. Because at that time, then everything's gonna turn back to normal. normal. Right. And it, like when what you said here, like I'm thinking, like if I'm the ground, I'm like, yo, God, what did I do? <laughs> what did I do? <laughs> I just listened to you, you know. <clears throat> and he's like, you're cursed for what? You know what I mean? He's an innocent bystander in this whole thing. <clears throat> so I, right. I, I just see the, the connection with, you know, ecology with human morality. Right. And, you you know, and, and even now, right, as as we see the, the decline of the, the, you know, moral fabric of, of mankind, what you expect the ecology to, to, to be even better? Mm. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Everything is connected. Right. If you if you think decline. about it, but not on that weird new age stuff. But we see that because of the fall, the ground was cursed. Right. And now instead of fruits and, and, and vegetables, you're getting thorns Thorn. and thistles. You can't eat that. Mm. That's useless. And right. those things are sucking the the nutrition from the ground and right. those things grow like crazy right the weeds right sucking the nutrition that's all because of the curse mm. right. you know what i'm saying so now um, um the ecology that was supposed to provide provide for you is cursed hmm. the work work is blessed you're supposed to work that was your purpose mm. but now it's hard, it's hard. So how many guys come through like yo that first episode y'all was complaining <laughs> <laughs> The first episode of season two, y'all was complaining about work. Why? Dog, because you have to do it to survive. Yeah. Dog, Adam didn't have to work. Right. God that gave burden. Him, yeah. Right, God gave him an abundance. That burden mm. wasn't on his yeah. back. Like, right. dog, if, if you don't work, you don't eat now. Yeah. yeah. So the ground got cursed. And his relationship to, to, to this uh, uh, creation that he was about to have dominion mm. for is straight disrespect. Mm. And then you go into the crib, you know what? Your wife, straight disrespect. <laughs> yep. no, or not even your wife. Maybe your little shorty. Because <laughs> you're just in madness. <laughs> you're just, you're Yo, just she's trying, she's you're trying just shacking to, up. She's trying to dominate you now. Yeah. So what happens? Dog, this is all a result of the garden. What happened in the garden? That's yeah. right. Makes mm. sense. No, perfect sense. Nah, yeah. and it's, it's that burden too. Like you said, it's now it's like this burden. Like before where it was... Adam was just getting up and, you know, just, you know, um, taking care of, uh, of the garden. But now it becomes this, now you have this, this, this aura, this shadow of responsibility, Dog. this, this, this it's heaviness. Real. It's real. And it's the same thing as a man, you know, as a man, you don't provide, that's how you feel. You know, you're like, yo, I have to go out there. And it's just this, I, I think it's just this shadow that's put over work now. Where mm -hmm. before it was never supposed to be like that. Before. Right, right. Because that was your purpose. That's, right. yeah. Your purpose is first of all, you 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 lead. You you mm -hmm. was placed in the position to lead mm -hmm. again, not dominate and be a tyrant. Right. But in a position to lead, mm. and you were supposed to lead your family and provide. All For of sure. that is included in that. But now you have to do it by the sweat of your brow. It's gonna be hard. Hard. Right, and that pressure is gonna be on your back, right. and you're gonna feel like I'm being broken, cause right. the ground is not going to participate. Right, <laughs> and the thing, and you start to think about just like even you know at, when you think about jobs, you know you never feel like you're making enough. <laughs> right. You never hear a man overworked where he's and underpaid. Like, right. Exactly. Overwork and underpaid. It's it's always, and that feeling is always, always going to be there. there. When it comes to work, you always right. feel like, yo, I'm working too hard and I'm not being appreciated by my yeah. boss. I'm not being appreciated by this company. You always, oh, I got to level up. I got to do more. I got to right. get more. That burden is always right. there where you're never satisfied. And I think ultimately it's because you're not going to be fulfilled by that. Right. Because right. your fulfillment is with being connected to God. That's right. Right. So so Adam, you know, I think Adam's purpose that was given to him by God, it was fulfilled. like he would get up every day and mm -hmm. he's just filled and happy and fulfilled and full of joy and full mm -hmm. of love. Right. So the work was just an expression of that. 
right? It was, mm. It's an expression of God. It's an Correct. expression of worship because I'm doing what you told me to do. Mm-hmm. Now it's different. Once you're disconnected, dog, now it's against you. The yeah. ground is literally, <laughs> dog, resisting you in everything you do. It's like a treadmill. Going running nowhere. in place. Going nowhere. Yeah, so now you got to think you go, like you said, you go out there, you're being resisted. You go in the house, you're being resisted. <laughs> so like you... And, oh, everything. And that's why you overdo it. That's why you you turn into a tyrant. That's why you right. turn into a chauvinist because it's like, <laughs> I get no respect. You think about Rodney Dangerfield. I get no respect. Yeah, you're walking, down, was, the, you walking down the block, the dog look at you, <laughs> bark at you. Yeah, yeah. And you're like, yo, you stupid dog. You're like, get out of here. You're the worst. <laughs> Your kids don't respect you. Your wife don't respect you. Your boss don't respect you. And you think of, you feel like Rodney Dangerfield. I get no respect. Wherever walking, I go, I get what no respect. What happened? A bird will come poop on your head. <laughs> Cause that dominion you have, <laughs> you're the fish. Word up, dog. Nobody yeah, respect. Every, yo, he he said, listen, you have dominion over everything. Now, it's gonna be hard, man. It's gonna be hard. Yeah, it's am gonna I, be hard. Am I the only one that still sees a little bit of mercy from the Lord, though? <laughs> In break the curses. Break, break the mercy down. Bring it up. Nah, like what what I see. I, yes, yes. The the ground is gonna be harder for you to eat, but you're still going to be able to eat. You know, the ground is Amen. still going to be yeah. able to bear fruit for you. Right. It's just going to put, you got to put that work in right. for the right. wife. There's going to be an hour or two or probably more of excruciating pain during childbirth. But once that baby comes out, you forget all about that pain. And it's right. all about right. that life that is sitting in your hands. And to yeah. me, that's just, that's God's mercy. That, yeah. You know? you know, you know how I look at it, that so, justice and mercy. You, yeah. Come what I in mentioned, in. what I mentioned, earlier. you know how I look at it. I look at it as God being good established all these good things but because you guys ruined it now it comes with a curse but these things were all good yeah you're right you got to understand like childbirth um eating going out there and work like you said adam was he was supposed to work from that was a good thing but be, you messed it up so right. the way i look at it is like this was this is being good is the natural order of these things the relationship between man and woman you know, these were all good things that established by God, but you you tainted it. I, mm-hmm. I, I should say now it's tainted. Yeah, mm-hmm. like God but, isn't going to completely trash his right. masterpiece right. because right. you messed up. Because you messed up. He's, He's like, just going to, you know, tweak it a little bit. And so now it, it's just that much more, like, uh, what's the word, like reverence for it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Now you don't take it for granted. Like he, Adam was walking in the, in, in, in the garden just taking fruit from exactly. whatever he wanted. Exactly. You know, he didn't have a reverence for God. He, you know, so now he does. Exactly. When that fruit, when it takes six months for for that <laughs> for that uh, tomato to grow, then then he's like, oh man, I had it good. Mm-hmm. You know. So in verse in verse twenty, it says, "And Adam called his wife's name Eve, because she was the mother of all living." Also, for Adam and his wife, the Lord God made tunics of skin and clothed them. Yeah, I really like that verse when it says the man called his wife named Eve because she was the mother of all living. What do you guys think about that? That was that was the beginning of hope because by him naming her that um, and, you know, with the naming, mm-hmm. you know, it gives you a sense of authority. Uh-huh. He believed what God said. Right. Right. He believed because God said out of you, all right, your seed. This this deliverance is gonna happen out mm-hmm. of you, right? So now this is a concept they had no idea of, right. like childbirth. They didn't go through that yet, mm-hmm. but he named her believing what okay. God said. Yeah. yeah, that's that's yeah. I really like that that you said that because um the thing is that at first I remember initially reading this I used to, mother of all living. I just thought oh she's gonna be the mother of us all in turn and she is. You know, in fact there's. Um, scientific evidence that's showing that the uh, mitochondrial DNA actually goes back to one person and goes back to yo, you know, that we do have a common mother, which is Eve, because right. you know. Um, but anyway, um, I used to think that's just because she is, you know, all mankind, right? Was you know, birthed through Adam and Eve. But I, after rereading this and realized that this, that when Adam named it, that that was immediately after God said, you know. Uh, that your seed the is going to crush the promise. Mm-hmm. So this is talking about, I see it that, yo, through you, Jesus Christ is going to be, he's going to come, he's going to be birthed. And at the same time, there's going to be a group of people that's going to 
call on his name and have faith right. and they will be alive. Right. So this is who's the living. Those that call on to Jesus and believe in him or, you know, believing in the promise to come or looking backwards like we are looking at right. what he did for us. So that's the living. So that, yeah. so Adam mm. was saved? I believe so. I believe so. It's probably the verse that, uh, cause he uh, believed. Right. He believed. Okay. Um, you know, and, and, mm. and like you brought up that, that mercy, right? We see that in the next, uh, next verse, right? With 21, you mean? Yeah. Yeah. With them, you know, before they, they, they covered themselves up with leaves and it was kind of like a, you know, kind of girding them. Mm-hmm. And mm. then God went and covered them with, with skin, like a tunic, almost like a, a dress that kind of came down to your knees. That's the picture it's giving. Mm. But yeah. in that whole, like, where did he get the skin from? Mm. Right? right? Some another, innocent. Another innocent bystander. An innocent animal had to die yeah. that didn't do anything mm. to cover up your shame. Sure. So now you're seeing him developing the idea of salvation uh, and blood how right how atonement is only going to come through the shedding of innocent blood. Blood, yeah, right. right. You know what I'm saying? And imagine them just sitting there, never seeing death before, seeing an animal mm. die, yep. right? Yeah. And then you seeing God come down and just start cutting a neck. You think you, a, you think he let them witness it? Of course, I think yeah. so. I believe so. Because now you're so. going to have to practice this. Yeah. Right. So and you're going to have to them, teach yeah. your kids. Yeah. Right. And your kids is going to have to teach. Because you guys are always going to remember this is the only way. Yeah. Right. Mm. The yeah. institution there of is, the Levitical priesthood. Right. Yeah. There the is no word. other way. No, mm-hmm. no, no. Imagine the shock. Imagine the, the horror of them seeing that. Seeing blood. Yeah. Seeing blood an animal die because, because of their time. sin. Yep. Animals that they loved and cared for. You know? And it was because right. it's because of what they did. They right. understood that. Adam was was Adam the first veterinarian. <laughs> <laughs> there was no need for veterinarian. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what I like is that what people we all have to understand is that God must judge sin because of His holiness yeah. and because of His character. He has to. Yeah. You know, sin must be judged, and mm. that's the thing is that, and this is why we're seeing the death of an innocent animal. You know, that substitutionary atonement it has to take place because this is. And, and we're seeing this already. We're seeing the effects of sin, how it already disrupted the woman's role. It disrupted the man's role, you know, it, and we're seeing the effects of sin. Now you're seeing it disrupt the, the role of the animals. You're seeing the, yeah, yeah. Effect the role of the animal right. and you're seeing it affecting the ecology, like you're saying. Right. We're seeing all these things have been destroyed because of sin, how detrimental sin is. And we see as we follow sin, we see not only brings death, this is what brings famine. It brings war. Mm-hmm. It brings um, rape. It brings all these things into the world. This is why you see children are born with cancer. Mm. This is why you see people's DNA have been disrupted. You see all the effects of the world. This is why there's tornadoes. There's hurricanes. There's earthquakes. All these things have been disrupted and destroyed because of one man's sin that entered into the world. Amen. So everything, that's the cause. Everything got messed up. Yeah, everything yeah. got messed up. But through God's grace, he says, yo, I'm going to give you a provision yeah you know and, and he he's also showing them listen i'm the only one that could deal with your shame right yeah. you tried to cover up your shame with little leaves mm, around, right. around your you know like right your, uh, 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 your little privates girding your like a gird cloth your privates he's like no i'm the only one that could deal with it you can't your religion your efforts mm. cannot cover your shame Right. I'm the only one I could do it, and we see it in that. All right, so yeah. let's let's read this last section. Um, let's let <laughs> Mike go ahead, Mike. Let's see a section right here. Then the Lord God said, "Behold, the man has become like one of us to know good and evil. And now let's let's he put out his hand and take also of the tree of life and eat and live forever." Therefore, the Lord God sent him out of the garden of Eden of Eden to, to till the ground from which he ha- he was taken. So he drove out the man and he placed cherubim at the east of the garden of Eden and a flaming sword which turned every way to guard the way to the tree of life. Mm. Thoughts. <laughs> mm. 
Mm. So this is what this is exactly what we were talking about before we had the whole discussion on the tree of life. You know, he said that because of this, he's he sinned. He's gone into this fallen nature, and there's if he remains here, and if he eats from that tree of life, he's going to remain in this fallen nature. So now we're seeing uh, the provision of God, His grace and His mercy. Again, we're seeing this because now to live in this fallen state, to live in a state where now you remain in war with your wife, you remain in war with nature, you remain in war and completely, the most important thing is remaining separate from the source, from God. Mm -hmm. Now that means that's eternally living in misery. So he said, my love for you is that I have to give you a, a, a temporal punishment and kicking you out in a for a greater eternal reward later. Mm -hmm. So he's allowing you to go through this temporal punishment by keeping you from your hands touching that tree of life and living forever in this fallen state of misery, pain, suffering, and destruction, but having to live this way mm -hmm. and to continue. So the temporal punishment is you're going to die, return back to the ground, you know, and not have to live this way. And I see just the relationship, like we, we've we been um, focusing on just the relationships being all um, messed up. And now you're seeing the relationship between man and God. Mm -hmm. You know, you're seeing just this progression. Because like when you read 23, it says, Therefore the Lord God sent him out of the garden to till the ground from which he was taken. So it's like in the beginning, it's probably, I don't know if God was like, go out. Now you have to fend for yourself. You know, before where everything you had, at, where it was freely given to you, where you could eat from every tree freely, that's dead now. Mm -hmm. Now you have to go and go get your own, you know, go out and fend for yourself, till from the ground. But then when you get to 24, it says, so he drove out the man. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I don't know if it was like this just, now the relationship is severed from mm -hmm. where probably before he was able to go out and till the ground but still come back. Mm -hmm. But now it's like sin is separating man from God so much where we can't even be in the same vicinity no more. I don't know. Yeah. So, the, well, you're seeing this progression. Just w quickly, one thing I see too is the fact that he left the tree of life there mm. gave them hope. You know what I mean? Like mm. that maybe one day that relationship could be repaired and right. they could come back. He didn't destroy it. He didn't remove it. He left it there. Right. And um, as a reminder, so as a reminder, but it also get, left them hope to know that maybe we can repair that relationship. So have we speculated this episode? What? <laughs> Speculation time. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, you know, pretty much man in his fallen state must not participate in immortality. You just can't. So I'm, I'm thinking of it like this, man, your, your spirit and flesh, that's how man was created. And you're going to have a spirit, two parts. You're going to have those two parts, right? Oh, you mean three. Right. Spirit, three. Yeah. So something about that tree would affect the flesh and that, that sinful flesh would not die mm. right mm -hmm. and like you said death is kind of a it's kind of grace mm -hmm. that your your flesh is gonna die right. and then your your spirit you're gonna get a new spirit through jesus christ right but imagine if the flesh never died then how would you get that reset right you understand what i'm saying mm -hmm. so um that was that was grace that you die and then you know we read about you you're getting a new body right. cuz you were you was man was made to have a body right. like you're going to have a body mm -hmm. right whether you end up in heaven or whether you end up in hell you're going to have a body cuz that's mm -hmm. how you was made mm -hmm. right so in that fallen state which your your spirit being disconnected you can't you can't participate in immor immortality with that it has to get released right. and that flesh has to go. Right. Mm. And also another thing that I'm looking at, it gives you a picture of God had to drive them out of the garden. Like, yo, y'all yeah. gotta go. Y'all gotta go. Get out. Right? They didn't want to go. And I'm I'm thinking, again, the tree of life, that represents Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And 
God just kind of broke down to them how this thing is going to be resolved through the shedding of blood. Right. You're not going to try to do this yourself by going to reach for that tree. Right. Mm. Right. Yeah, I see what you're yeah, saying. Yeah, 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 yeah. Whether it's you or your little Hello. dirty picnies that you're going to have. <laughs> 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 right, <laughs> your little, your little bad, dirty kids. Y'all can't, y'all can't be around here. Yeah, baby kids, <laughs> yeah, some baby kids. Cause yo, unpredictable. Word up. So you know right. what? And and that just represents self. Right. You trying to attain, obtain life, your own way. Right. By mm -hmm. reaching out for that fruit. Right. God was like, Nah, dog. I'm not gonna have any of that. Matter of fact, yo, y'all gotta go. Mm -hmm. And they was like, no, we want to stay. It's nice in here. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but it's for this plan. Because this plan, the plan, has, the the, plan has to. The, you ha and your body, you, it has to die. Because you're going to get a new one. Right. Right. And obviously, through the whole counsel of God, you know, more of the revelation, more of the promises comes mm -hmm. out about the whole plan of God. Right. Now you're going to get a new body. Right. You're going to get a new spirit, too. Yeah. It has to be. Everything has to be new. And and I'm th just real quick. I'm thinking about you. Th you look at the flesh. How you think about somebody getting old? Us, you know, people. Somebody 70, 80, 90. When they start to get, when you start to get to those ages, it's even hard to just even look at a person like that because you know they're going through so much pain and just mm -hmm. now imagine how how bad it could have got if you eternal. Because it's only going to mm. decay. It's only going to get bad. Yeah. So you're thinking about a world where there's mumbras. Mm. <laughs> right, where right, you right. just, you're seeing like straight mummy. Like, could you imagine somebody living just in this state where the world is decaying and things are getting worse and worse and worse and somebody living a thousand years, bro? Mm. Right. Like, how bad can it get? When you look at somebody who's 90 or 100, you're like, you see them on their way out, and you're kind of glad because you're just seeing them slow down. You're kind of seeing them just becoming the shell. You're right. You know what I mean? And imagine that if if you were able to extend that. Like you said, that was grace from God. It God is grace. like your dog. You don't know how bad it could. It could this thing could get worse. You, mm -hmm. I don't even want you to see how bad y'all can get. And, and And we have a picture of that. Dog, imagine you're living. How much damage... How much do dog? You're right. Cats do damage in thirty years. Thirty years, sixteen <laughs> years old. People, it's get active out here in these streets. Damage, yeah. destroying yeah. lives, destroying families. Come on, man, sixteen years old. People putting in work dog. out here. Yeah. Destruction, mm. and 16, 17, 30, 40 years. Mm -hmm. Dog, right. imagine. <laughs> and we're gonna see it with the <laughs> with dog. The you sons. imagine a guy and and we actually get an example of that yeah, of right. the the amount of destruction. That could happen when right. men's lives were at you know at longer. They they lived longer. Mm -hmm. Imagine a dude, you go m destroy a family, you go do a bid, and you come back out just to do it again. again. You go in because you living forever. You'll be <laughs> just pure destruction. But you even think about human beings like the death penalty. Why do you have that? You know because the person that you the person that commits a uh, the crime that's so heinous. You're like your dog. You can't. You be. can't be out in society. Listen, the, the, the earth will be a better place with you not breathing this air. Why are you breathing our air? <laughs> you <laughs> think about that, bro. That's but, why you have the death penalty in but, certain cases. You know, even in those situations, right? Those heinous crimes that we're thinking about. Jesus Christ died for all that. He made provisions. That's you know? right. All right, because we're not making fun of you know criminals or people that do bad things because we were all the same. Right. right. It doesn't matter what you do. You're still sinning against a holy, you know, holy God. Right. Right. But Jesus Christ made provision for man. And we see that provision being made with Adam and Eve from the beginning. Right. And his love and his mm -hmm. grace, even in the midst of his judgment and his justice happening, that love and that grace is still there. Right. So, and I mean, you see that as far as just, you know, just probably being a parent. Yeah. You know, when you punish your kids, it's not, you know, to them, they're looking at it mm -hmm. like, yo, this is bad. They're crying. They feel like it's not fair. But to you, 
you know, you having more understanding, having more knowledge, you're like, you don't know, this is to prevent you doing something worse. Right. Or this getting worse. And you're seeing it with God being a loving father. You know, he's providing these way, this, this way out where he's mm. like, you know, if it was up to you, you would live forever. And this thing would keep, con- you know, this thing would go on forever. But I have to allow death to do what it has to do. So like you said, so that this plan can go through and, you know, the seed, um, the seed of the woman crushing the head of the serpent. Like this is the plan. That's the plot right here for the, right. the Bible. Right. So, um, yeah, man, this was a good chapter. Uh, so let's just close out in a prayer. <clears throat> So, Father, we uh, just thank you for this time, uh, Lord. Uh, we thank you that you left us these records. Uh, it makes um, you know, Mondays and Tuesdays easier to understand. Like when we see these things and we hear these things, um, we see how it started, where it started from. But we also see your mercy and your grace and your provision, and we see a promise. Um, and that promise was uh, fulfilled two thousand years ago on the cross. Um, you delivering us, you dying on the cross for us, and we thank you. Um, thank you for this time, and we pray that um, just this message just goes out and bless somebody. And it's in the name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. 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 Amen.